Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Craig here with another great business to discuss in this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Lewis, and he's selling his Amazon Associates display advertising and affiliate business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. So welcome to the show, Lewis. How are you doing today? Hey, Craig. I'm doing well. How's it going? It's going good. Thank you for asking. And I'm looking forward to talking more about your business. But before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of the business. It's an Amazon Associates display advertising and affiliate business in the sports niche, created in April 2018. The average monthly revenue for the business is $17,203, and it makes an average of $16,802 net profit each month. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing 54485 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So now that I've given a general overview of the business, let's have a look at what's included in the sale. We have the primary domain and all site content and files, two additional domains used as 301 redirects, social media accounts for Facebook and Twitter, SOPs, affiliate contracts and relationships, and freelancer contracts. Okay, Lewis, now let's hear from you. Can you tell us a little about your background and building and running online businesses? Sure, yes. So I've been building niche content websites for a little over eight years now started back in the day when Empire Flippers were known as the AdSense Flippers and they were building kind of micro niche sites and things like that. And then obviously progressed into more kind of profitable and mainstream niches as my experience grew. I used to work as an analyst for a large energy company here in the UK and I left my full-time job in 2015, I think it was, um, just to work full-time on growing my portfolio. Um, today, that portfolio is around 12 to 15 content websites and they're on different niches all at varying stages of development and we've got a really lightweight operation really it's myself and my wife we've got kind of a part-time VA who helps us from time to time and for this particular website business there's freelance writers. Well sounds like you've got a lot on your plate with the 15 sites and um, what has been your sort of strategy to build and grow this site then? So my expertise is in organic traffic, primarily from Google. So that's where we focus 100% of our efforts. We have tried branching out different, but we always come back to this model. We rely on search traffic pretty much 100%. So there's opportunities to go outside that, but it's just not where my expertise lie. So growing this has been mainly a content play with very experienced writers in this industry. They've played this sport. They know the industry by the back of their hand, and I rely on their expertise because I'm really not experienced in this niche at all. And my role is really to find certain keywords and topics and have their inputs and using Google really to drive traffic, finding kind of underserved keywords. Okay, so how come was it that you chose this niche in particular then? So it started around in April 2018, we started this website and it's a very popular niche and it's in the kind of the top 10 most popular sports, certainly in the US, perhaps in the world. And really what happened is the right domain kind of came along. And which is how I like to operate as well, is rather than choosing a niche and then trying to find and go and go and find a domain name. I sometimes let the domain name kind of find my niche for me. Um, I was trolling kind of uh, expireddomains.net, which is a free tool anyone can use. And this domain popped up. It had really great history. It was a legit company running kind of a video production on this sport. So I picked up the domain name uh, to test the niche really and dive in and do a lot of competition research. And I kind of I saw that it was somewhat underserved. There wasn't a great amount of quality and there were a lot of existing kind of affiliate websites that were performing well. So I knew if I got the right writers on board with the experience, then we could kind of carve out a space for ourselves in this niche. Yeah, that's really interesting to start. So when you found this domain and you started creating the content, how did you start to monetize your business? So we did the first kind of 12 months was a lot of testing. What we do is we like to kind of put them in like an incubator 
if you like, and we kind of test different content angles and keywords and topics to see what works. So we were just kind of dripping content onto the site to see what Google liked. The other two domains that are redirected to this, the main domain, uh, were actually also tests. So we would see which one was the most powerful, really, in Google's eyes. And the winner, obviously, then the other two were redirected. And, yeah, we just tested content topics. And then when we find a winner, we kind of run with that and try to be the best resource for that entire topic. And we build out a silo and then move on to the next. And we just keep testing that way and iterating. Okay, yeah, iterating your way to make it more profitable and increase the traffic. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I see the business earns from Amazon Associates, display advertising and affiliate. Yeah, just talk a little bit about that. So how much of your income comes from those monetizations? And do you know how many like, affiliate networks you're associated with and stuff like that? Yep. So initially we were 100% kind of Amazon Associates as we got a feel for the niche. Um, so I didn't have any experience in it, so I didn't know what else was on offer, really. Slowly but surely, we transitioned over to a quite a reasonable 50-50 split, I would say, between ad revenue now and Amazon Associates. And then there are two or three other niche-specific affiliate programs that you have to apply to get in, one of which we've got a preferential rate due to the volumes that we send across, which is usually 5%, and we're at kind of 7.5% now. Yeah, the split is... That's one of the one of the lessons I learned really was we used to be 100 percent Amazon associates and obviously with commission structure changes and things like that, the risk was just far too high. So we transitioned over to display ads, which have proven to work really well in combination with affiliate links. Um, I know myself and a lot of other people are worried that it will impact your click through rates and things like that. But I've not found that to be the case, especially in this business. And people are just seeing ads now. Yeah, it was really good to kind of de-risk. Amazon Associates element and it also gave us a chance to work with the e-commerce stores and the other platforms in this industry and work out deals with them and get to know the business from the inside really from their point of view and what they're looking for from their affiliates. Absolutely yeah and the success of that has been reflective of the earnings which you can see on the listing page because business has uh, grown a lot so excellent stuff well how come is it that you're selling the business right now then? So it's our model, really, to build and grow and then sell these assets once they reach a certain stage. For this site in particular, it was a result of numerous emails I've been receiving from interested parties and different investors. So especially kind of post-COVID, the market's hot recently and had probably six or seven emails over the course of three-month period of people trying to look for an off-market deal, if you like. So I did plan on holding on to the site and implement kind of the future plans that we've got and continue obviously to pull in the revenue. But all that unsolicited kind of interest did sway me a little bit. And I thought I'd kind of contact and buy flippers, see what their kind of valuations were looking at at the moment and what the demand for these kind of content websites. And I know especially with the quality of the content on this website, even the experience of the freelance writers, it was um, the really high demand at the moment. So that did sway me. Yeah, there certainly is higher demand and doesn't seem to be slowing down at the moment. So is there anything you've learned from building this site that you will apply to the other sites in your portfolio? Yes, I touched on it briefly just a moment ago, but that was kind of the mix of affiliates and display ad revenue. And I think that's a definite winner. Those two combined, can one doesn't affect the other as far as I've seen. And also working with affiliate platforms other than Amazon. So you can get much higher commission rates. There's flex to negotiate. They will make you aware of new products or new kind of sub niches within your niche that you probably haven't thought about before, but you can tap into their experience and really find those sub niches and things that your competitors aren't targeting. We've also been able to work with them to create a kind of custom tool that we have on the site. So that's perfect for, again, it's an affiliate play for us, but it helps the readers find kind of the products they're looking for. Yeah, it's a custom tool is certainly a unique feature, I guess, that your website has. And so is there anything you tried with building a business that didn't work out for you? Yeah, I got kind of about a year and a half ago, run a test with one of the writers um, to let him choose his own topics to write about. But the trouble that we found was they weren't targeting a specific topic or keyword. And because this is kind of a hobby slash leisure activity, it's more kind of a diary format. And that just didn't gel with our kind of organic traffic play that we have. 
jobs. So it was really, we just flipped back and, and I just continued to assign topics. But what we wanted to do is test whether it would work. And I think it would if we were looking at trying to get into Google News and things like that. And that would be a good play with that kind of content. Or if we had grown a large email list, we could promote that kind of content too, because that's the kind of stuff looking at stories and people's experience in this niche. So yeah, that was kind of, I didn't really work out, but it could given a different kind of angle, if you like. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Just to circle back to the tools, if you don't mind, you have one that's already running on the site and you also have another one that's designed, but it's not yet to be implemented on the website. Could you just tell us a little about that? Yeah, so we have a couple of other websites and we run quizzes on there and we find they're really good for interaction with the readers. So we've had one created that's designed to go either in mine in the page or in the sidebar on particular pages. And it's designed to ask a series of five to seven questions to try and lead the reader down the path to find the right product for them. So we kind of created a database of all the available products in this specific category. And because there are so many people just really don't know which ones are most suited to them. So then I had my writers craft the questions and the answers. And we have a scoring mechanism, which then will suggest one to three different products that would suit their needs. Got it. Yeah, that's a really great content curation tool that would certainly differentiate your website against the competitors, I guess. So, yeah, you mentioned about you predominantly focus on SEO and organic search. Have you ever tried any other types of marketing for this business? We did a very brief kind of email list growth campaign, which was to offer a competition, if you like, free entry. And it was for um, just to win a, a product. And yeah, we did a quick test to see we got kind of 300 email signups. And I wanted to see how easy it would be to grow a newsletter in this or a mailing list in this industry. But it's just not where my expertise lie, but it did prove that it can be done. So that was one of the tests that we did. But no, it's primarily organic traffic is what we focus on. We try not to deviate too much outside of that. So there obviously there is scope. We've got kind of YouTube on our radar for this. If we were to keep this business, we would heavily invest in YouTube content and video content because it's, I think, again, another underserved element of this niche. Yeah, and about that, so what are some of the main ways that you try to grow the business if you were to keep it up? So, yeah, I just briefly mentioned YouTube there, but there's um, also another product section for this particular industry. It's got very high ticket price items, and we have some content on there, but there's a whole sub-niche, if you like, that you could dive into. So I put a lot of focus on fleshing out the content that we already have in that category and push hard to feature those across the website where it made sense, obviously. And these kind of this product section is where we have the higher than average commission rate with the affiliate platform I mentioned earlier. So we're on around seven and a half percent with scope to increase to 10 percent with greater sales volume. So that's an opportunity we'd look at is if we could push more volume of sales, we could get that extra two and a half percent increase up to 10 percent. And with these products are ranging, you know, you're looking anywhere from five thousand dollars up to a hundred thousand dollars. So the scope's quite large. Um, secondly, there is an element of this hobby which can be quite location specific and we've already got a large batch of content that we have produced and an idea of how we were going to monetize it, but that's not quite planned out as expected. Right? With COVID restrictions and things, a couple of the affiliate platforms we were looking at joining are no longer taking applicants for the foreseeable, but we've kind of, we're have kind of we on the list ready as soon as they reopen. So what we could actually do is pivot that, the purpose of that existing content and promote more kind of location specific affiliate programs, such as like places to stay and tours and things to do in that area. So things that you could get with booking.com and Airbnb and things like that and jump on their affiliate programs. It's kind of a really different way to monetize and it's kind of an arm of it we've not touched yet. Wow, yeah, that's some great assets that you've put in place for a new buyer to take on and use to grow the business. As for the day-to-day work then, can you describe the amount and type of work you do in this business for maintenance? Yeah, for me personally, it's just a couple of hours a week. I run a bi-week report um, using a tool called Notify OK. That kind of provides me with any products that are no longer in stock on Amazon. And then I simply assign these to my writers who will source a replacement product and then they'll go ahead and rewrite the content and we can just switch it out. So we're not sending readers to broken URLs and things like that. That side of it has become less work because we're no longer 100% Amazon focused. So 
it's getting less and less as the months progress on that side. And we're also switching out those for kind of the affiliate programs if they offer high commissions or we've kind of seen a better conversion rate on that. I do all the keyword research for the site, which is basically where my skill set is. Typically 30 minutes to an hour a week, and I'll dive into a sub-niche of the topic and pull out a large batch of the keywords and simply assign them to our writers. We work in a Google Sheet. I either assign them if I feel their strength lies in a particular topic, or I will just let these guys pick and they go as, as fast as they can and to auto those topics themselves, and they'll just go ahead and crank out the content. And it's my wife, actually, who does the uploading of the articles to WordPress and does some brief formatting, which is minimal now because they've kind of got used to the style that we're looking for. She's got an English degree, so she'll do spell checking, Grammarly, and do the kind of on-page SEO, such as URL, title tags, internal linking, simple things like that. And then hits publish. Yeah, so that's kind of what we both do. We do have a VA, which will help from time to time, but we've got more content than we can add to draft on the website. That's an interesting setup. You mentioned that you use a software tool. What are some other tools that you use to help you in the running of this business? So we have Generate Press Pro, which is kind of a theme, really lightweight and makes it super fast. WP Rocket, again, mostly for site speed and caching the CSS, JavaScript, things like that. I'm not very technical, so I don't understand that side of things, but the tool does a really good job of that. Notify OK, as I say, is $25 a month, and that's kind of invaluable for notifying you've broken URLs and also alternative products that you could use. And we've also got AAWP, which is a plugin for Amazon affiliates, quite well known in the industry. And that enables us to add short codes in for product links, pulling images from the Amazon API so we don't have to break that terms of service by downloading them and hosting them ourselves. We have Elementor on the site right now and Elementor Pro. It's not required, but it does enable us to add a few nicer touches to the website, and some nice design elements. And um, we use that in combination with advanced custom fields, which is how we working with. We have a deals section on the site, which is a recent addition, actually. And it helps the readers to find all of the best deals products in this niche. So advanced custom fields. Um, but that is a free tool. And finally, we've got Link Whisper, which is a tool for adding internal links into your content. It's really helpful. It's at the bottom of every article and sort of suggestions on content you can link to. That's kind of in the same category or contains the same words, etc. So that's a really quick way we use to quickly add these internal links, which we find give a really good SEO boost to the pages themselves. Yeah, it certainly sounds like this belt has this business has a lot of tools in its tool belt um, with the support of the employees as well. It's going to make it a lot easier for an owner to run. But are there any skills or requirements for someone who's not familiar with this niche or business model that a new buyer should be aware of? I would say knowing WordPress is a must because um, that's the CMS we use. But I think most people do know that or that their team or staff will. Keyword research is mainly done using either Google Autosuggest or Ahrefs. So obviously, well-known tools there. Ahrefs is optional, like Google Autosuggest gives us plenty. And I use that primarily. The Ahrefs mainly just to kind of check the competition, shore up, or, or kind of if I'm branching off into a different subtopic, we will use that. As far as niche-specific requirements, so I've never played this sport and had zero knowledge when I was starting out and I, I to be honest, I really that much now, but that's why I rely on these writers. Like this was the goal from the start is to have these writers on board who have the first-hand knowledge and expertise. So I just focus on growing the business and that mainly keyword research and looking at competition, seeing what they're doing and just do it a little bit better. So, yeah, I never know if it's a hrefs or hrefs. <laughs> You're both, and I've never known which one it is. <laughs> no, I think it's a hrefs, but I've just got used to saying a hrefs because I think that's how you say the HTML version, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Up for debate, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, on the flip side of things, then, what do you think are the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? I would say the biggest risk is obviously the vast majority of the traffic comes from Google Organic Search. So developing other channels would obviously reduce that risk. So I mentioned earlier, kind of creating the email list and definitely a YouTube channel. That would be my first go-to is to de-risk that element. There are some large kind of social groups as well and forums. So that is a potential 
source of traffic that can de-risk that from the Google organic search. But yeah, we've not suffered much in terms of any of the Google algo updates. The website's kind of trusted enough. So we've kind of stuck with what we know. But certainly additional traffic channels wouldn't hurt and help me sleep better at night as well. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you've built up the business solidly enough there. So it's able to ride those waves. Excellent stuff. So overall, putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer then, why do you think this is a business worth buying? So I found that the vast majority of the content that we publish, especially on kind of the low to medium competition keywords, they all rank in the top 30 like immediately. So there's like I say, there's a lot of trust there within Google and there's a lot of age and history with the site. It's been over three years old. And the more informational keywords, especially kind of they're popping into the top 10, even top three within days of being published. So as I mentioned earlier, we test different topics by publishing, you know, two, three, maybe 10 articles if we're confident and see which ones pop. And generally all of these informational keywords are just jumping straight in there into the top 10. So it's seen as an authority in Google's eyes. And I don't think yet we've scratched the surface on what it can do. We've got over 500 published articles already, but there are sub niches and topics that have been on my radar for a while and we've not yet had the time to, to kind of get into them. Previously as well, we've worked with the largest app in the industry and we've got access to their data. And that's allowed us to create a large batch of unique content that provides our readers with data from thousands of player data. So real life data has come in and they've given us a data dump and we've been able to craft this content, which nobody else has. And it's kind of given us an edge there on the competition. because We've got this inside knowledge and that was only able to do because of the quality of the content that's being published on there and trust that we've managed to gather in the industry. We've got a great affiliate relationship with two of the largest e-commerce platforms in the industry. So we've worked with them, I mentioned earlier, to create a custom affiliate store. And that features in our sidebar and is a prominent and good source of revenue for us. And we work with them to create this for us. I think there's only over the one other site in the industry that they've worked with to do something like this. And for the second affiliate, I mentioned we've been able to negotiate higher commission rates, which again is all that trust. We've been around for a longer time now. We've not just popped up and disappeared overnight. We're sticking around. We've got great writers and great content. We've also got that deal section, which I briefly touched on earlier. So what this does is it links into the APIs of the two largest e-commerce platforms, and it shows the best deals that they have available. Um, it's relatively new on the site, but it's already proven to be quite worthwhile. So in the future, if we were to keep the site, we would definitely push that further, make it more prominent and channel our readers to that tool. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of strong points to this business. Excellent stuff. So regarding the sale of this business, then would you commit to a non-compete? Yeah, absolutely. Like I say, we've got a portfolio of sites in other niches, and I think a non-compete is a must. And how much support are you willing to offer buyers? Are you going for the standard 30 days of email and Skype support? I'm actually happy to provide kind of 60 days of email or Skype. You know, we could have a, a 30 to 45 minute call each week or IM or email, whatever the buyer prefers. But yeah, I want to see the site go on to bigger and better things. So I'm happy, you know, 60 days is fine by me. Oh, well, it's great for a buyer to know that they're going to get that extra support to ensure the smooth transition of the sale. And are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? Yes, it's an option. It would depend on the terms offered. Yeah, with the right terms and obviously the right amount up front, definitely open to a discussion on that, certainly. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share that I might have missed? Not that I can think of, no. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time, Lewis. It's been great talking to you. You too. Thanks, Greg. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing 54485. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.